Hi everyone, um, my name is Raven Pierce. I'm 17 years old from Portland, Oregon. Um, I am an artist, a creator, and an upcoming architect. I will be pursuing a degree in architecture um, this fall at University of Oregon. And one of my dreams and goals um, is to launch an architectural company initiative that focuses on creating equitable housing for black people pushed out of their communities. And if you live in Portland or North Portland, you know the history of gentrification um, and how it you know, has pushed out many people who look like me. Um, so that's something close to my heart. Um, today, I would like to talk to you all about growing from hard situations and how you can use that growth to build your future. Um, in order to do that, I will tell you about a hard situation I have had to heal from show how you, or show how you <laughs> can grow in that journey, um, show you how I grew in that journey, excuse me, and how art helped and influenced me in this journey. So, yes, um, so I'll just kind of start off with a little background. Um, when Creative Mornings asked me to speak about something creative following the theme of divergence, I was excited and filled with joy, but I also panicked as I do everything under the sun as, let's see if that next slide is coming up. There we go, everything under the sun, you can see that is all of the things that I do, um, Legos, customizing shoes, crochet, knitting. So um, I just had a lot to choose from, thankfully. Um, but knowing that I do art regularly and fill my days with playing music, um, I thought about the last five years of my life that art had become my rock. That's how I came to the conclusion that I will show you my art and also tell you my personal story of struggle and trial. So, growing up, I have always loved to build. I made paper um, crossbows and folded origami cranes, built small wooden boxes, and spent a whole summer hammering a shed together with my father when I was just 12 years old. I've had a good childhood and a good upbringing. While I have been through the adolescent struggles of puberty, <laughs> crushes, and middle school, there are not many things that could have prepared me for my high school and the years to come. Um, on the, in the past five years, um, I've experienced have been some of the hardest in my life. Um, I've had four knee surgeries, marking each year with an injury and a surgery. Um, this has been the result of basketball. Um, just to set you all up, I've played basketball for 14 years, starting when I was just two years old. Um, basketball has always been a part of my life because I have not experienced much life without it. Um, but during my eighth grade year, um, I tore my meniscus. And coming into my freshman year, I was rehabbing and only played three-fourths of the season. However, that summer, I got a full-ride scholarship offer playing with my travel team and my coach picked me to attend the All-American basketball camp, which is a big camp for high school girls looking to go D1. And this camp would get me one step closer to my dream of being an All-American like my father was in football, who I believe is on that Zoom. Hi, Dad. Um, <laughs> I tore my meniscus that next game. My sophomore year, I knew I would not be able to play that season. so. I decided to dedicate myself once more to rehabbing for basketball and switch schools to play for a better basketball program. Once again, my coaches and the people around me were excited for my game. And the coach who had once offered me the full ride told me that her offer still stood. Things were starting to look up and I was excited to play basketball once again. But as you can tell in this story, the good things did not last. In one of the early winter practices of my junior year, I retore my ACL, and this time it took two surgeries to rebuild it. This was it. For five years, I had been in a constant loop of hope, excitement, then disappointment and loss. The injuries had not only stunted my basketball growth, but the opportunities that would have led me to be playing high-level basketball at a college for little to no cost. And if you know college, you know how expensive it is. My mental, physical, and emotional health had taken a hit. 
and all of those emotions hit at once. So many thoughts were going through my head and it was hard to stay optimistic. It was the first time I had to face life without basketball and I was not excited. So the question then becomes, how did, ooh, come on now. <laughs> Here we are. Okay, we're going backwards. The question then becomes, how did I grow? Yep. Okay, little clicker issues. Mm hmm got it. Perfect. <laughs> Zoom is interesting, but I, I love it. Um, so how did I grow? Well, you all, um, it was really tough. Um, I looked at the last 14 years of my life that I had played basketball. And in that time, I realized a few things. Um, I had baggage from issues that I had bottled up. Um, basketball had been a band-aid to my pain, a facade, and now I was faced with the hard truth that I had to live without it. And lastly, I hated being vulnerable. Okay, clicker, I'm counting on you. There we are. I hated being vulnerable and dealing with emotions. And this is just one of the pieces that I used to channel out frustration. Um, in this time, I had to turn to my art and creativity as a catalyst to get through. My songs and music offered me the outlet that I needed. Um, and one of the songs that my mom would always sing was, it won't always be like this. The Lord will perfect that concerning me. Sooner or later, turn in my favor, yeah. It's turning around for me. And that song was my inspiration for my change and my growth. So mom, if you're listening, just thank you. Um, I just had to share that piece of her. Um, while facing the facts that I was a broken individual was hard, it placed me in the position to grow. I was more than just the girl who was good at basketball. My identity and well-being was not based on playing a sport. To learn these things, I had to heal my wounds, unpack my baggage, and let my dream go. Then I learned a new set of things. While I wouldn't have the chance to go to school and play basketball for free, I would have a choice in picking the college I wanted to attend. I wouldn't have to wait for the best offer to present itself because I would create the offer that was best for me. The summers that I missed because I was working on my shot instead of life would be filled with the internships, volunteer opportunities, and programs I would need to propel me into my future major. I would make up the time I missed, the five years, four knee surgeries, and three injuries in one year. And that year was the infamous 2020, which has turned everyone's life around. Um, in 2019, I worked my first job as a camp counselor for Girls Build PDX, instructing young girls in the application of construction skills and building of several projects. This opportunity set me up for my new high school as I was majoring in construction. In my construction class, I was taught how to turn real design plans into real life creations. And during my course, my class started the build of a tiny house trailer. Having construction helped me stand apart from my peers, and I was able to use this to my advantage for my portfolio for U of O's architecture program. Today, I am feeling familiar with design programs similar to AutoCAD and Revit. And if you are in the design world or are an architect, you know those are two <laughs> really good programs to know about. Through my high school, I was also exposed to a community-based environmental, educational, focused nonprofit, Camp Elso, that uses the natural world to connect children from underrepresented, that is an architectural drawing, excuse me, Camp Elso, there we are. Um, they use the natural world to connect to children from underrepresented communities for STEM. Um, through their organization, I did two paid internships, Your Street, Your Voice, and Empower Her. Um, at your street, your voice, 
I worked with a licensed architect to create a floor plan for my project, Reimagining Space in Portland as a Library Literacy Center, a design that pays homage to my mother as having a literacy center has always been a dream of hers and one that I will make happen. Through Empower Her, where I met Jocelyn Rice, your next speaker, um, I learned to use design programs like Canva and others similar to Adobe, creating my zine titled, We Have the Power, Tools for Change, a zine that informs people of the discrimination um, black women like myself face. Um, it's not done yet, but we're gonna keep going with it. So, like I said, um, my creativity is flow. Um, ending this chapter of my journey has helped me see that my setbacks were all a setup for my personal growth, healing, and ultimate creative expression. Um, I have used art, construction, and writing as a leap towards my future. So thank you, but now I wanna leave you with five things I hope will help you grow. Number one, the ability to grow depends on your willingness to create and evolve and willingness to heal your path. You'll end up going backwards in growth if you don't take a moment to heal. It's never too late to start your healing journey. Number two, look to the future to change your outcome. Um, start planning your goals. It's never too late to learn a skill. Um, at almost 50 years old, my mother got her master's in education and she's currently a curriculum developer. Um, so it's never too late to ever start your dreams, no matter how old you are or how young you are. Um, the skills that you continue to hone now can help to build your future. Um, number three, allow the feelings of discomfort to push you to change. In this time, you all, we have opened up so many com um, conversations, much centering race, the political world, capitalism, and gender and sexuality. For some, these conversations don't come naturally. But if you sit with discomfort, listen, apply what you've learned, you can be the change we need to see. Number four, without the will to persevere and stand firm, you will continue to think backward instead of forward. And number five, allow your inner creativity to show itself through any medium. The more you grow, the more your creativity flows. Um, thank you, that is all I have for you. But um, as you all know, I'm a senior going into college. So if you all know of any scholarships or grant opportunities, I will put my email down in the chat. So thank you so much. <laughs>